Hello. Good evening. My name is Jason Walters. <clears throat> this is the IPR Game Room, and today we're going to talk about The Extraordinary Adventures of Baron Munchausen by James Wallace. Now, as you know, I have read an awful lot of role-playing game books, and I have to say, this is one of the funniest ones I've ever read. And we should go into a little bit of the history of this game before we start talking about the details. And I am going to uh, go to the unusual... Uh, uh, I'm going to make the unusual move of actually reading to you out of the book, which I very seldom do on these, uh, on these video clips. But um, we'll get to that in a moment. So... Um, this, as a role-playing game, is a simulationist and storytelling game. Uh, it was first published. This is the third edition. Uh, and it's a very lovely little edition with full-color artwork, uh, all of which is, are various images of the, uh, of the aforementioned Baron Munchausen himself in it. Now, this is the third edition. The first edition was published by Hogshead uh, Publishing in 1998. Uh, and uh, this game has a reasonable claim of being the very first storytelling game. So kind of, it is one of the originators of kind of everything uh, we do and sell here at Indie Press Revolution, with the other being Anne Dupuis' Fudge System, also published in the 90s. Together, they pretty much form the core uh, of what it is we represent here at IPR. They are the, the progenitors of all of this, the grandparents, as it were. Now, the book is based uh, on uh, a series of tales uh, that were published by German writer, scientist, and con man, uh, Rudolf Erich Rasp, uh, in 1785, uh, so hundreds of years ago. Uh, they were called, the book was called, uh, Baron Munchausen's Marvelous Travels and Campaigns in Russia. That was the original one. There's been, I think, many other Baron uh, Munchausen stories uh, done since, uh, not to mention uh, movies, television shows, radio plays, and so forth. Um, the character is based on an actual person uh, named uh, Hieronymus Karl Friedrich von Munchausen, uh, who was a German nobleman who did indeed fight uh, in, in the Prussian, uh, the Russo-Prussian Wars uh, of the uh, 18th century. Uh, he was famous for several things. Uh, one was uh, entertaining hosts uh, at his estate where he would tell outrageous stories that had very uh, a little um, uh, allegiance to things like uh, scientific or historical plausibility. Uh, though it, it would be unfair to say that he was a liar per se. He was just a teller of extremely tall tales. Uh, he was also known for living to be very old. I believe he lived to be uh, something like uh, 80, 80 or 87 years old when he died, which is, you know, pretty old uh, for the 18th century. Uh, and he's also famous for his love of the ladies. In fact, at one point, he married a woman 57 years his junior. Um, and uh, so he was a, a larger-than-life eccentric figure. He, he did not actually look very much uh, like the caricature of Baron von, Baron von Munchausen. He did not have an enormous nose. He did not have um, kind of pointy, curly mustachios or anything like that. Those are later comic conventions. But it is based on a real person. Um, and in fact, uh, Rudolf Rasp knew him uh, and um, wrote uh, these stories as sort of a gentle tribute slash mockery, not that the actual uh, Hieronymus Friedrich von Munchausen found them very funny. Apparently he did not. Um, but the game itself... Is a, is a fairly simple uh, storytelling game uh, that operates off, off of a series of uh, gambles and bets with a limited number of coins as people compete to tell the most outrageous stories uh, possible uh, and then interrupt one another using a betting mechanic or duel one another also using a simple mechanic. Um, but the game's really about storytelling and who can tell the best stories. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take an unusual... Um, uh, uh, measure. I'm going to take the unusual measure of actually reading to you from the book because on page 41 uh, in the second appendices, because the actual game itself is, is really uh, remarkably brief, only about 32 pages of the book, are the actual game itself. The rest is all appendices 
of, of supplemental information that the author, uh, the very amusing James Wallace, has compiled over the last 25 years of since having first published this game. So you have an enormous, the, actually the appendices are actually larger than the game itself. Um, but Appendices 2, The Rules in Brief, uh, which I'll just read to you. Uh, it is the year 17 blank. A group of noble persons are gathered together with a good stock of wine, and they pass the long evening by entertaining one another with tales of their travels and surprising adventures. Little respect is paid to historical details, scientific facts, or the bounds of credulity. Each player begins the game with a number of coins equal to the total number of players. This is his purse. The person who last fills the party's glasses turns to the noble on his right and asks him to tell a story in the, of, of a particular theme by saying, So, Baron, or some other noble title, tell us the story of whatever it might be. Now, the game, helpfully, has actually 20 pages of things you can just use there, uh, of suggested uh, tall tales, such as how you accidentally started the America's War of Independence, uh, your encounter with a floating island in the Sargasso Sea, the Venetian masquerade ball where no man but every woman recognized you, etc., etc. Um, uh, the player that it thus addressed responds with yes, in which case he must tell the story, or with no, my throat is too dry, in which case he forfeits his turn but might buy a round of drinks for the company. It could also, uh, the extraordinary adventures of Baron Munchausen could also be considered a drinking game. There's a lot of drinking that goes on in this game that could be Pretend, uh, could be a simulator, or could be real. Maybe, maybe, maybe you want to do a lot of drinking while you play this. Um, uh, thus, becoming the person who last filled the party's glasses, he turns to the person to his right and gives him a subject for the story in the same way. In telling a story, each player should outdo the previous storyteller with a tale that is bigger and wilder and places more glory upon himself. Stories are told in the first person and should not be too long. About five minutes is good. Other players might interrupt the storyteller with objections or elaborations to points of his story. This is done by pushing a coin, the stake, to the storyteller and saying, but Baron, or the grown-up version draining one's glass, pushing a coin at him and saying, but Baron, followed by the objection. Interruption should put amusing and challenging obstacles in the way of the teller's story, not nitpick. A pair with no coins may not interrupt. The storyteller may accept the interruption and the stake and either explain it away or build it into his story, or he may disagree with it. If he disagrees, he may add one of his coins to the stake and dismiss the interruption out of hand. He may also ridicule the asker for believing anything so stupid and for doubting the word of a nobleman. The interrupting player may counter by adding another coin to the, t to the take and another insult, and so on. The one who first admits that he is wrong claims the entire stake. And if the story, and if the, and if it is a storyteller, then he must build the interruption into the story as above. Direct insults to a player's truthfulness, parentage, or claims to noble rank must be answered by a challenge of a duel, which is settled by three rounds of rock paper scissors. The winner receives a loser's purse. The loser must drop out of the game. The story finishes in one of two ways. Either the storyteller concludes it with a vow. Uh, as to the truthfulness of the, ma of the matter, or an offer to duel anyone who does not believe his word, or one of the other players drinks a toast to the player's health and tells his story. The storyteller then challenges the person seated to his right to tell a new story as described above. There are other ways to end the story in an emergency, and they are described in the main text. Once all of the players have each told a story, the player um, who begins the game now initiates a round of voting. By my word, he says, I declare that the story about blank, told by Baron Blank, was the most extraordinary story I ever heard, and then passes his purse to that player. The coins are not added to the player's purse, but become part of his bounty. In order, each player pledges the whole of his purse to his favorite tale, and the player with the largest bounty at the end is declared the winner and must buy the final round of drinks. However, he must also pose the question uh, for the first story of the next game, whenever that may be played. And those are the rules. Really, in brief. Now, as I said, most of this book are appendices. And uh, there's a lot there. I mean, there's a lot. Optional rules, optional settings, uh, yeah, fiction written by James Wallace about Baron Munchausen, a selection of, of letters between um, James Wallace's ancestor, because supposedly this game was actually the first role-playing game written in the 18th century. So between James's pretend ancestor and the Baron. There's an enormous amount of correspondence, a bunch of it from the Persian Empire, 
but they're going back and so forth about storytelling, gaming, and techniques. It's all extremely funny. I mean, it's extremely amusingly written. Uh, uh, highly, highly recommended. Um, an excellent version of one of the great classics of the entire genre that you come to IPR to find. Uh, and uh, available from us at Indie Press Revolution at the link below. Also, follow us on the social medias at uh, Facebook, and Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our newsletter and subscribe to our channel here at YouTube. Uh, and remember, when riding a cannonball over the head of Russian troops, be careful where you land.